The GOP presidential field is getting even more crowded with Mike Pence, Chris Christie, and North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum to announce their campaigns this week. Pence filed paperwork with the FEC and is expected to formally announce tomorrow. Christie is expected to announce today in New Hampshire. So joining us now is Hogan Gidley. He was the national press secretary for the 2020 Trump campaign and the former principal deputy press secretary for the Trump administration. And Joel Payne, he's the chief communications officer for the Political Action Committee, Move On, and a CBS News political contributor. Good morning to you both. Good to see you. Morning. Good morning. Uh, so, Hogan, let me begin with you. Uh, what do these candidates need to do to separate themselves from frontrunners, former President Trump and Ron DeSantis? How do they draw that distinction in the mind of voters? Well, there's Donald Trump and there's everybody else. And what everybody else is trying to do is occupy one single lane, and that is I'm Donald Trump's policies without his personality. Now, I would argue it's Donald Trump's personality that got him the policies that gave us record-setting success and record-setting time for all Americans, regardless of race, religion, color, or creed, because Washington is so toxic. And now we've seen with the three-letter agencies trying to weaponize against, uh, against him and his campaign and his family and also suppressing bad news for Joe Biden and others, you see how difficult it actually is to get things done. But the fact is these candidates all have to try and take out Donald Trump while still maintaining the support of the MAGA base. That's going to be very difficult for everyone to do, but especially someone like Chris Christie, who likes to be the wrecking ball, and quite frankly, who's the person who executed the best political murder suicide in modern history when he took out Marco Rubio on a debate stage back in 2016, only to not gain any of his support, but to kick himself out of the race in the process. So I expect these people to come into the race and start swinging pretty hard, pretty fast. DeSantis, uh, obviously, uh, someone like Governor Christie, and we'll see if that actually gets them any more support. But it's going to be tough to overtake the person who has a 40-point lead on the field right now. Joel, can any of these candidates differentiate themselves from Donald Trump if they're not willing to openly criticize him? Well, Maria, that's a good question. So I think this is all about how they show up within the Republican electorate. They all show up very different within a Republican primary. Chris Christie, Doug Burgum, Mike Pence, Tim Scott, Donald Trump, Vivek Ramaswamy, so on and so forth. They all show up differently within that electorate either more MAGA, less MAGA, more moderate, less moderate, but they don't show up differently outside of that. So I think that's the biggest issue that I would be looking at if I was a Republican strategist. There is no differentiation between them in terms of how they show up to a general election audience, and they're all gonna have the same challenges. Doug Bergen, for example, who's gonna be joining the race today, who is a, uh, a governor of North Dakota. Well, he likes to kind of position himself as focusing on energy. But he's also signed anti-LGB legislation. He's also signed anti-abortion legislation. That's going to show up the same way to the general election electorate that Donald Trump shows up, that Ron DeSantis shows up. So I think those are the things that I am looking at, obviously, as a Democrat, but also just as a political observer about how any of these candidates will play outside of the Republican primary. So uh, voters uh, weighed in on the two leading candidates in the GOP field, Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis. I want to play a bit of sound, and then uh, Hogan and Joel get your reaction. Let's listen. I like DeSantis. Um, I'm hoping that him and Trump don't get into a real feud, because I'd like to see them work together some. I mean, ideally, I guess I'd like to see Trump get another term and then go to DeSantis. I feel like Trump, from the day he announced, has been persecuted and prosecuted, and uh, he's still got so much done that I find it really hard to sort of jump ship, but uh, the name calling doesn't help. President Trump is, uh, I thought, was a really great president, um, but we need somebody that can be in there for eight years. All right, so those are uh, most, those are all Trump supporters. It um, seems like it. Yeah, it does seem like it. Yeah. Uh, but let me, let me ask you, Hogan, um, I, I thought that was an interesting quote from uh, Congressman Matt Gates uh, in, in talking about uh, Tim Scott, who is running for president, uh, where he says that it sounds like the type of Republican uh, that the party used to run back in the 90s, like uh, George Herbert Walker Bush or, or Bob Dole. And it's sort of interesting to me because you, you made an interesting point, Hogan. You said that you'd argue that it's President Trump's persona personality that seems to appeal to the voters, because if you strip away the personality, the policies of the Trump administration are sort of typical Republican positions, right, mm -hmm. when it comes to the Second Amendment, mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, uh, being pro-life. 
life, et cetera. Um, so what is wrong with a Senator Tim Scott or a, a former Vice President Mike Pence if you can get the same things that you care about and you don't have to own the libs every time you take the social media? <laughs> Well, look, Tim Scott was my senator. I'm from South Carolina. Love him to death. He has a, one of the most inspirational stories on the planet. Um, but it does smack of a 1990s, early 2000s campaign, as does Nikki Haley, as will, of course, Mike Pence as well. And, and you ask the question, what's wrong with that? Nothing. But that's not the question of whether it's right or wrong. It's whether you can get the votes needed to win the nomination. And right now, I think people view this country as so toxic. The culture war is growing. There's an attack on our freedoms and our liberties. Our southern border is wide open. Uh, the world's burning down with Russia and Ukraine and, and China making all types of moves. The economy's in tatters. There are problems all over the place. And do, do the niceties of the past, the D.C. decorum, if you will, really work against all of the powers that be? A lot of voters say no, it doesn't. Now, can they get some of that fight with, with Donald Trump? And, and do they say, I don't like everything he says, but I like the policies? Sure. Do they think they can get that with somebody else, like a Ron DeSantis or a Chris Christie? Only time will tell. But the fact is, Donald Trump has a lock on a vast majority of the, of the electorate right now, whether the court system or the indictments really work to, to hobble Trump in some way only remains to be seen. But it's his race to lose. How he, how he handles this moving forward, though, is all up to him and his campaign, and we'll see what happens. Joel, let me ask you a quick question about uh, President Biden. You know, even though people aren't talking a lot about it, there are still some concerns about the president's age. And taking a little bit of a, of a tumble over a sandbag probably doesn't help, though his age probably didn't have much to do with it. But, you know, a lot of people are holding their breath. You know, this is likely going to be something that's going to continue to come up throughout the campaign season. How does the president combat these concerns? Yeah, I want to admit, I took a tumble outside the White House when I went on a garden tour about a month and a half ago. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad that CBS didn't cover it. But, um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you this. Look, I, I think President Biden understands this is going to be an issue. And I think it's fair for it to be an issue. It's OK for people to ask about it. I am just not swayed or convinced that it is going to be a determinative issue in this election. One, if you look at the Republican front runner, Donald Trump, Joe Biden and Donald Trump literally could have gone to high school together. They're, they're virtually the same age. They may not seem virtually the same age, but they are. So any concerns that voters might have about electing an, a candidate of advanced age, that is gonna transfer over to Donald Trump. Two, we have not seen any indication that President Biden's job performance has been impacted by his age. And that to me is the magic line. If we ever see a fall off in Biden job performance, if there's ever a question about whether he can handle the job and you can make a case about that, that is a concern for the White House, but that is not a concern at the moment. In fact, we're coming off of a week where Joe Biden arguably had one of his strongest weeks of his presidency, where he was lauded by his Republican adversaries for being smart and tough. So I, I think that the age conversation is fair, and I think the president understands it's fair, but I don't actually think it's determinative because I think it's baked into the cake, and I don't think we've seen that voters will actually hold him accountable for that at the moment. All right, uh, Hogan Gidley, Joel Payne, gentlemen, thank you so much.